Hey everyone, welcome to Creating with Jazzy Bundles. Today, we are going to make shaker cards. Let's get jazzy. My name is Jenny, and this is Creating with Jazzy Bundles, the channel where we take our simple supplies from your neighborhood craft store or favorite online retailer and turn them into one-of-a-kind pieces of art. If you like this video, hit subscribe before you leave and ring the bell to be the first to see our new videos. And with that, let's get started on today's craft. All right, today we're going to make some shaker cards and I have three different ways that we can do it. And I'm gonna show you how to do each of those three different ways today. This is an example of one of the cards that we'll be making today. And you can see it moves really pretty and I've added a little bit of uh, pearl, liquid pearl drops on the top to it. To give it a little bit of something extra. So first, what you'll want to do is cut your card stock down to the size of your card. And you're gonna need two layers, one for the base, which for my base, I've decided to have um, two layers. So my card is black and then I added a foil red to it. And then you'll need a top layer and your top layer is going to need a shape cut out of it. It can be a circle, it can be a square, it can be, this one has a Christmas tree out of it. Whatever you want your hole for your shaker to be, that's what the shape is gonna be. And then you're going to take either some type of a clear plastic sheet, like an acetate sheet, a transparency sheet. I've seen people use um, clear sheet protectors, something like that. Or I have also seen people use tool, so you could use tool as your layer. Or you can do um, something along the lines of a bag, and these are two different ways that I have done it. I have used um, little jewelry plastic bags that I usually put my jewelry in when they're completed. Or there's these um, photo sheets that you can use, and they're photo flip pages. And here's the photo flip packets. There's 12 in this packet and they are three by four size. And basically they are just these little pockets, little pouches that you would normally put your photo in. And it has a double sided tape. So you would put your photo in, stick it down, and then it allows you to um, look at another photo or something hidden up underneath. So we're going to, you can either use something like this or a little jewelry bag or, you know, get experimental. If you have little baggies around your house, little Ziploc bags, maybe sandwich size or snack size, something like that, they may also fit depending on what size card you're using. So I'm going to show you today how to do it with these little jewelry bags, these flip pockets and an acetate sheet. All right, so first let's go ahead and do the one with the acetate sheet. All right, so the first thing you're gonna do is take your paper that has the shape cut out of it and put it face down and your acetate sheet is gonna get glued to the back of this. I like to glue mine. You could probably also tape it. Um, so it just depends on what you would like to do. I'm gonna use my art glitter glue today. I'm gonna to put it all the way around the outside. And adhere it down. All right. So now you can see, well, you can't because it's clear, but I can't, um, 
nothing will come through this. So when we put our sequence in, we've now added a, a protective layer for them. So now what we need to do is we need to, I'm actually going to add a little tiny piece of tape right here to this edge. Doesn't seem like it wants to stay closed. So, okay. So now I'm going to use my three dimensional foam tape and build kind of a, a well around it. Now when using the foam tape, you'll probably want to mostly do a two layer um, foam tape. And unless you're using glitter, which obviously is much thinner, um, but typically the sequins I don't know, you might be able to get them to shake around a little bit in there. The thicker your shaker material is that is in here, the um, harder it will be for it to shake around and, and move if it's not um, thick enough. Now when you build your well, you want to make sure that all of your sides and corners match up exactly. If you have any holes, your um, stuff is going to fall out. That's just the way that is. Go ahead and add a second layer. Now I've also done this where you can put, instead of foam tape, if you want to use something like um, a foam board, like those project boards that you would normally get from the Dollar Tree, something like that, you can use that. And I'll show you a card here in a, a few minutes that I made with that. They do turn out much thicker since the material is, is thicker. Um, but if you're going to put it in some type of a package or a box or um, maybe a present or something instead of mailing it, uh, they work out really well. you don't have to cut yours down thinner into thinner strips. I like to just because it doesn't actually require the whole thick strip to in order for it to uh, to work and it, that way it makes my tape go a little bit further. Um, so it just depends on what you want to do. I'm going to add another strip up here at the top just because otherwise it's not going to have um, very much support. So I'll go ahead and add that strip up there.
Now it is time to add your sequence. Um, because my page is a little bit thinner, or narrower, I should say, smaller than my background, I'm going to put my sequence on my red paper and then place this down on top. Um, if they were exactly the same size and you could line it up exactly, um, maybe you could do it like this, but it's better for me if I go this way. Now, one thing I do not have, um, and if you were to, if you were doing it this method, um, I would suggest you take, um, if you have one of the powder embossing tools that um, kind of allows you to get rid of the static on your paper before you emboss, I, it's a good idea to run it on the inside of your tape here. That way your sequence don't get stuck up in here. So you'll see that when I put mine in, um, a lot of mine will probably, or some of it at least, will get stuck up in here. So I'm actually going to put in quite a few um, pieces just to overcome that piece, that that aspect of it. Now one thing I, um, somebody in a group that I am in um, made a suggestion and it was an incredible great suggestions. I'm actually going to do it on this card just so we can see what it looks like is they suggested gluing some of your sequence down into certain spots because when you start moving it around you can see that all the sequence come down to the bottom and sometimes they all go to the bottom and it, you can't really see anything in the card. So what she does is she glues a few into random spots so it always looks like there's a little bit of sequence there. So I thought I would try that, uh, try that method today. So I think to continue. Well, let's see if I put those in places where this will shine through. Most of them. I'm going to add a couple more. Right. So now our glitter glue dries pretty quickly, um, but I'm going to let it sit here just a minute while we work on some of the others, and then we'll come back and add in our sequence for our well. We'll come back to the rest of this card here. All right. I'll set that up there. Now the next one we're going to do is with these little jewelry bags that I have and both this one and the photo flip cards are done very similar um, in fact almost exactly the same way so what I use is clear scotch tape and tape it down I have extra sequins hanging out all right so I just start with some smaller pieces and line it up so that it doesn't show on the front. Okay. 
And then just tape all the way around the edges here. And you'll need to be careful if your bag is uh, close to the same size as your image, like mine is. So as I get to the bottom here, I'll be a little bit more creative and careful as I tape my edges down. And there we have it. Now it shakes here. So you can um, apply this directly to this or apply your top directly to your base. Um, you're not going to get as much movement, but you will get some. So it just depends on how much movement you want there to be. Or you could put a little bit of double sided tape around. So we'll just add a little bit of double sided tape so we can see what that looks like. Give it a little extra support around the edges here. One got stuck down there. Oh well. All right. And we take off our tape. I did my layers where I tried to do my layers at the 16th I think it is instead of the eighth or no the eighth instead of a quarter so that I could have a little bit more um, just like a, a small sliver instead of the thicker edge and there you can see it moves around nice and shaky all right now for our last one that we will do is the photo, the flip photo. All right. 
So if we take our back side of our frame, I guess we can call it our, our top layer here, we're going to adhere this very just like the other one we did. The thing to keep in mind is not only do you have to get the edges, but there's the little pocket where the um, sequence went in. So you need to make sure you cover that up as well. So we can go ahead and use the double sided tape that comes on the pockets. And since that's super sticky, you want to make sure it's right where you want it to be before you stick it down. All right, and I'm gonna tape our edge closed here. Now these pockets, because I feel like they're a little bit more solid and um, just a little bit more solid than the um, jewelry bags, I think you probably don't have to worry as much about making sure every little piece is um, taped down at every little edge. It just kind of depends on what you would like to do. Um, let's try to move these out of the way. All right, and there's this one. Now this one, let's see what happens if we were to glue this down directly onto here, how much movement we still get. So we'll go ahead and there's my glue here. I have little bits of tape stuck to me everywhere. if it's going to stay. Let's see. There you have it. And it shakes. It still moves. 
And so this one could definitely go through the mail. Um, I might suggest using double-sided tape instead of glue though. I don't think that's gonna stay. So what we can do Instead, let's double sign and tape it. And we'll do one more piece at the bottom. All right, now we'll put it back on. It should stick just fine this time. Ta-da! And it shakes really well. This is actually one that could go through the mail probably just fine and not have any issues. So now we need to fill in the sequence on this one. See what this one looks like. They're sticking to my finger. And my blue has snuck into my black here. Or my gold. Let's see. All right. Let's gather them back up. That one came off. So.
and here we go and another one and I've lost my pin for my glue Just like that, we have three more shaker cards, and they all move really well. Um, some of them are a little thicker. This one is two layers of double-sided tape. This one is one layer of double-sided tape. And then this one we tape directly on to the back of the card, or the, the base of the card and the pieces that were they're all adhered directly to each other. There's no spacers in there. And you can see that it um, moves really, really well still. So there's three different ways that you can make your shaker cards. Don't forget to click subscribe and ring the bell to be the first to see our new videos. We would love to hear from you in the comments or on our social media. Show us your creations. If you enjoy this video about making cards, we have this whole playlist with other tutorials. And if you want to check out some of our other crafting videos, check out this playlist here.